and then every once in a while check to make sure that I'm still, it's hard to do this and then still make sure that I'm in frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, so y the idea is that you have your sheep brain in front of you and actually hands on. Oh. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that you should notice, or maybe not, depending on the sheep brain that you have in front of you, is that some of them still have their meninges, the outer wrapping. So what you're seeing with this is the dura mater. Tightly adherent on the surface of the brain would be the pia mater. And for those of you that still have some of your meninges wrapped up in there, if you pull the midbrain, if you pull the midbrain away from the cerebral hemispheres, you might be able, do you see this cobwebbing in the middle here? That's arachnoid. So if you pull on the midbrain away from the cerebral hemisphere, you might see some remnants of the arachnoid right there. So obviously we can't tag arachnoid in the sheep brain because most of them are not going to have any of it left. But certainly the dura mater, and then if we put a pin onto the surface of the brain, we could say what meningeal layer would this pin be breaking through, and that would be pia mater. All right, so let's first look at the side of the brain here. And let's first find cranial nerve one and two. Cranial nerve one is this little bulb right here. That's the olfactory bulb. It would sit in the cribriform plate. And the nerve endings would go through the olfactory foramina. And that would give the sheep its sense of smell. The next one I want you to find is this one. Can you find that on your sheep brain? It should still be there. That's a branch of the optic nerve. I'm going to put my sheep brain back together. Can you see that now? So both of these right here are the two optic nerves. A nerve is a collection of axons outside of the central nervous system. And you'll notice that right here they're forming the optic chiasm. This is where hemidecusation is occurring. Some of the fibers are going to stay on the same side of the brain, and some of the fibers are going to cross over to the other side. Hemi means half. Decusation means to cross over. After the optic chiasm, these axons are going to continue inside the brain, but now there are axons in the central nervous system, so we call it the optic tract. All right, taking the brain in half again. If you don't have any meninges left, you probably don't have this structure. But this little thing down here, that's the pituitary gland. And you cannot tell just from looking at this if it's anterior pituitary or posterior pituitary. We simply want you to know that that is the pituitary gland. The anterior is also called the adenohypophysis. And the posterior is called the neurohypothesis. And it's an extension, of course, the neurohypothesis of the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, I'm going to show that to you and tell you what hormones it makes. All right, so now let's start with the cerebral hemispheres. Of course, the cerebral hemispheres, if you look at the surface of them, they have sulci and gyri. The gyri are the um, bumps of the brain and the sulci are the invaginations or the nooks and crannies as I like to say. Can you all find those? Okay. Now look on the internal surface of the cerebral hemisphere and one of the most notable things you'll see is this white matter right here that goes all the way around this opening. The opening is a lateral ventricle. That's one of your first two ventricles. The other one is on the other side. Right there. And actually in this sheep brain I can see some of the choroid plexus still in the ventricle there.
The white matter that's surrounding <clears throat> the ventricle is called the corpus callosum. It's a tract, a collection of axons inside the central nervous system, and its purpose is to connect the right and left side of the brain. Now let's look more inferiorly, and you'll see right here, this is like a medial view of the optic chiasm. I want you to find right below the corpus callosum, this region right here. Kind of looks circular right here. And this area right above the pituitary. This circle right here, this circular looking structure, or this area, that's the thalamus. That's the routing station where it's sending information into or from receiving information from different parts of the brain and routing them to the correct destinations. So that's the thalamus. Below it is the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus, as you learned in lecture today, controls your anger, sex drive, food and water intake. It's part of the autonomic nervous system, but it's also an endocrine gland. And the hormones that it makes, well, they're numerous. But let's focus on two of them that are made in the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior pituitary. The two of them are called ADH, which stands for antidiuretic hormone, and oxytocin. Oxytocin causes smooth muscle contraction, like uterine contraction. And it's also smooth muscle that's found in the mammary glands to cause milk um, let down, not milk production, but milk let down. ADH, antidiuretic hormone, that targets the kidneys and will stimulate them to re retain, reabsorb more water. So the amount of urine you produce will be decreased if that hormone level is high. So we say it's your water saver. There are many other hormones that the hypothalamus makes and you will learn those as we go on. Now, the epithalamus. The epithalamus, the only structure we want you to know is this cute little finger, it looks like a nipple, like projection. Depending on how your sheep brain is cut, it may be on the other half. So you might need to pick up the other half to see it. Yeah, mine on the other half is not as present. Can you show it again? It's kind of right on the thing. Right here. No. It's that right there. All right, so here is my pineal gland. And again, it is um, responsible for making melatonin. It's so hard to figure out where I am in space here. <laughs> All right, so that is making melatonin, and that's part of the epithalamus. Okay, now let's move lower this region here where there's this little bump. This is going to be your midbrain. Now, what is the classic uh, landmark for the midbrain region? Actually, turn your brain, pick it up, and pull the cerebellum away. And see these two little bumps right here? Those are part of your corpora quadrigemina. So the top one is the superior colliculus, and the bottom one is your inferior colliculus. If you look on the other side of your brain, your sheep brain, you should find the other superior and inferior colliculus. So taken together, all four of those bumps are the corpora quadrigemina. And remember, the superior colliculi are important for redirecting your vision to anything threatening, and the inferior colliculus is important for turning your head to any loud, <coughs> threatening sound. All right, so that's the midbrain. Turn your brain back to the medial view here. In the midbrain as well, depending on how they cut, you might see this little canal. 
That's the cerebral aqueduct. If you don't see it on one half, you might have a better presentation of it on the other brain. This is the best one for the way my sheep brain was cut. So that's the cerebral aqueduct right here. And it connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle, which is found right here in this space. So the fourth ventricle is bounded by the pons and the medulla oblongata. Yes, the cerebral aqueduct connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle, this space right here, and that's bounded by the pons and the medulla oblongata. So the fourth ventricle is back here in this space that separates the pons and medulla oblongata from the cerebellum. The pons, I'll remind you from lecture, is important for micturition. It also helps regulate your respiratory rate. It influences the medulla oblongata. It's also important with sleep. And then if we move down here, the medulla oblongata, as you learned in lecture today, it has the cardioaccelatory center, the cardioinhibitory center, the vasomotor center, and a respiratory center. The medulla oblongata continues inferiorly as the spinal cord. So all of this region here is spinal cord. Now, if you look at your cerebellum, this part back here, you can look in the very center of it and you'll see that there's white matter that looks like a tree trunk and then also branches. So that's your arbor vitae, which means tree of life. And then all of these little leaf-like structures here, all of these little leaf-like structures are called folia. We won't ask you to find the vermis or the anterior or posterior lobe. We just simply want you to identify the cerebellum as a whole and the arbor vitae inside. The cerebellum, of course, is the part of your brain that compares your premotor cortex and the plan for how you want to move and how you are actually moving and compares it back to that plan and then can send corrections to the motor cortex. Okay, so that is the sheep brain. That's all I have to show you. Will you stop, please?